That's my youngest. I don't know if I can find my oldest. If there's anything yeah. that can get between a mother and her child, it's an addiction. Even though he lives right down the street, Tammy Scrimmager hasn't seen her youngest son in four years. I miss my kids. That's because for more than a decade, every day of her life has pretty much started there we go. and ended much better. the same way. I don't want to wake up in the mornings anymore. I'm tired of looking at myself in the mirror knowing, sorry, <laughs> knowing everything I've done to everybody that had tried to help me in the beginning. I just want to be normal again. When we first met Tammy, she didn't want to show her face or use her real name, embarrassed of what she's become. Why are we using a different name today? Because I've been doing this for so long and I'm very well known in the drug community and a lot of them might think that you're telling, telling on them and that's not something that you want. And plus I don't want to be cut off. <laughs> I don't want to be cut off completely. Cut off from using heroin? Right, and being able to get it, yes. After a few months, Any other day. she decided to let us follow her to see what a life controlled by heroin is like. Come on. I don't always have money when I wake up in the morning, you know? It sucks. How am I going to degrade myself today? I've stolen, I've prostituted. Just about anything you can think of a drug addict would do to get money, I've done it. This particular day, she actually had money. Just a waiting game. And started calling her dealers at 8 a.m. Hey, it's Tammy. She got in touch with one of them. Hey, I got uh, 20 bucks. Can I come see you, please? An hour later at 9 o'clock. I just exist. I mean, it's not, you're not living a good life. It's not a life to live. And by the end of the day, she'd done this three more times, spending a total of $80 on heroin, something she does every single day. I maintain right now. I don't get high anymore. It, this isn't a, it's not fun for me or anything. I do it to maintain so I'm not sick just so I can get through a day and function. Tammy says she knows she needs help. I mean, I'm not gonna make it much longer. Emotionally, physically, mentally, I'm not. But without insurance and almost nowhere to go, she's losing hope. Do you think one day you'll die from heroin overdose? Probably. I'd say 90%, yeah. We are in the middle of a heroin epidemic that will only get worse before it gets better. Last night, we introduced you to a Champaign County woman struggling with her addiction to the drug. I didn't wake up and, hey, I want to be an addict today. Everybody deals with their problems different. This is how I dealt with mine. Tammy Scrimmager has been hooked for 13 years. She's one of millions across the state with the same problem. WCI3's Amanda Porterfield shows us what a day in her life is like in the special report. And Amanda, tonight we see if she could actually get some help. That's right, Jennifer. During our journey with Tammy, she got the rare chance to get help and hopes not to become one of the hundreds of people who die from heroin addiction each year. It's hard to get to know Tammy Scrimmager, but if you look at her arms, they'll tell you exactly who she's been for the last 13 years. I'm a heroin addict. Tammy's tried rehab a few times, but says the vomiting, cold sweats, and other side effects of stopping are just too much. I am getting to the point where either I'm going to have to start using my feet or the main jugular in my neck, which I have done a couple of times. The only answer is detox. Hi, I was calling to see if I could get put on your waiting list. Throughout several days, she made call after call to find a place, but was turned away. I don't have insurance. As for the centers that don't require insurance? Yeah, she said start calling tomorrow. And she did to put her name on a list for an open bed hours away. It's a shame that a lot of these places aren't open 24 hours. Right now in Champaign County, there's very limited resources. The Prairie Center used to have both inpatient detox and rehab in one building. We lost a little over a million dollars since 2008 when we've uh, lost 26 staff. For an addict like Tammy, that's tough because just making the choice to pick up the phone is critical. When they call for help, you know, you try and move on them as fast as you can because they waver. Hi, nice nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We introduced Tammy to Tony Comtois. He's been clean since July 6, 2006. I have it on the license plate of one of my vehicles, you know. Um, it's a day I'll never forget. It's just a day when I kind of woke up, come out of a fog. Comtois got help at the Prairie Center, and since the detox closed, he helps other addicts get out of that fog. 
He drives them to other centers across central Illinois. It puts a strain on the recovery community, but it's made the recovery community stronger in the same sense, I think. Not everybody makes it, but it'd be nice to have the chance to go somewhere to make it. You can't take your own blanket or pillow. After four days on the waiting list, a detox center in Rockford called Tammy back. Because they'll go through it. I'm ready to go. I know I can do it again. This time, I've lost everything. Within a few hours, she packed her bags and we got on the road. I know it's not going to be easy. It never was before. But about halfway there, the center called. Hello. Told her the bed wouldn't be ready until the next morning. By this point, time was ticking and she was on the edge of giving up. So we kept going, stayed overnight, and headed to Rosecrans the next morning. Just before walking in, she broke down. Thinking about her son. And I think about him every day. And I never stopped loving him. But eventually, she went inside. A long but short walk so few stuck on heroin get to make. And unfortunately, this time it was not a happy ending for Tammy. She left the Rosecrans facility after only a few hours. She was supposed to stay there for a few weeks. The last time we spoke to her was last week, and she says she's still struggling with her addiction. Jennifer? She just couldn't stick it out, Good night. I guess. So what about the Prairie Center? Could they get detox again? Well, the CEO, Bruce Swardini, is trying to make that happen. They actually got close. He formed a task force, and after a year of planning, they planned to move into a floor of Pravina Hospital. But Swardini says the hospital backed out, so they're having to start from square one. They're waiting for the state to reconsider funding or for the community to pitch in. All right. Very eye-opening report. Thank you, Amanda.